The SPFL action returned on Saturday after that game yesterday. Make sure you go check out the review. Airdrie, Queen's Park. What an affair it was. But what a love affair Rangers could be having with Big Phil because it was Rangers 4, Hibs nil. Best performance of the season. Now, before anyone jumps down my throat and says, wouldn't be hard. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It would not be hard. And uh, questions have got to be asked. Where was this performance hiding? Was it simply the manager change? Well, uh, I mean, Stephen Davis, he was he took charge of that game against uh, Aris Lamassol and that went a wee bit pear-shaped, didn't it? So if you look at it from that point of view, we can't just simply say it's because, oh, they got rid of their manager because we've been shite before. Um, we'll probably be shite again soon, but Rangers won this game 4-0. A lot of players stepped up. There was a bit of high press in there as well for Big Phil. He knew what he was doing the day. Um, and a lot of players played played their best games this season. I, I genuinely think now, man, Rangers looked at that. Rangers fans looked at that starting eleven and went, "That looks absolute pish." Because you'd like to see who I actually have no issue with Seema, but a lot of people do. Um, then you've got Scott Wright. You've got Dessers. Um, what's the other bastards called Lammers? That guy, the great guy, the guy that scores a million goals a year. Man, we all we all know who he is. Big uh, Sam Lammers, but you know what? Like part of me looking at the team went, "This is going to be a disaster." Isn't it? <clears throat> and I just think there's a lot of hype around Hibs recently. Obviously, appointing Nick Montgomery, and they've got a different style of play. And you know, the Ange Post Ogilvy way kind of sort of maybe maybe isn't he? Maybe is. But Hibs were pretty disappointing for me. I, I mean, I'm glad they were, um, but I think Hibs were no by no means at their best. And Rangers probably. It, it was Rangers' best for a long time. I wouldn't say, you know, like in decades, obviously, or, you know, like a, a year, I'm pretty sure, under Beal with probably better performances as well. Um, like, most notably that I can remember. And you know, I think, actually, against Hibs and Hearts in Edinburgh, we put in a re- really good performances. Um, but, like I say, this game, kick off, Scott Wright does what Scott Wright does, something stupid. Trips up LU and I'm like, damn. Lammers then misses. Dessers then misses a folly. Fente misses a folly that came for a Connor Goldson mistake. Um, and then Barisic goes down injured. So there's a lot happening in the opening 10 minutes. Uh, Yilmaz replaces Barisic. And we don't know how long Barisic is going to be out for. But again, like Yilmaz isn't even in the fucking European squad. Like who, Whose decision was that? I, I know I don't get, right? I, he's not in the squad. But... Why can't it be, like why why can't we just put him in now that Barisic is injured? Or is there like some unwritten rule or a written rule or whatever that here once you pick your European squad that's it you can't add to it unless it's like a a, like a signing in January or something is is that the rules? Because I, I I'm kind of confused that like so what happens over club like gets like picked, like a really bad injury spell and fuck I mean what what happens but we've seen also these European squads you've got. Like a lot of youngsters in there that just come with it. So maybe I need to look a wee bit into that before I can make a total judgment on the matter. But anyway, he gets replaced. Sima makes it 1 0. Brilliant run, brilliant finish. He's been the outfield player of the season. I say that because Jack Butland's obviously a goalie. Um, but Sima, man, I've been critical of the guy this season. I'm not denying that, but he's put, he knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. And sometimes that's all you can ask for really really is and that's exactly what he does now straight after this he does drag a, a shot wide I mean it wasn't exactly the easiest of chances um, but Rangers we, I mean it was pretty nip and tuck with him but I think we were pretty much in control and what, what we had a beautiful side didn't we Nico Raskins Nico Nico, Nico Billick his first goal for Rangers a midfielder taking a long shot that actually trickles into the back of the net orgasmic as I would call it brilliant phenomenal man really really good Really, really good as a file's just been given in that Chelsea Arsenal game. What the fuck was that for, man? That Cucurella running the put with that fucking hair. Absolute nugget. Uh, anyway, though, we're going to half time. Rangers are dominating quite early. Um, Hibs just dying that goal at half, just before half time, knocked the stuffing out of them. Um, Seema makes it 3 0. We've seen the likes of Cantwell and Danilo return. And uh, Dessers made it 4 0. So, lovely jubbly. Dessers gets a goal. What's that about, guys? Who knows? But Rangers are back. We did put up... Well, I said Rangers are back. It's one game. But, I mean, 
back to what they should be performing like, <clears throat> especially at home and away, man. Fuck's sake, come on, we need more of this. None of this going like one down or conceding shit set pieces in here. We've had games this season where we had, we've kept clean sheets and won 4 0. I know they were against Levy, but we've still had them. So, you know what? Rangers are going to need to prove to me and most people that are Rangers fans and, you know, pundits, etc., that they can do this over a series of games and not just these one off games because this is this first game. You know, let, let's see what Rangers are looking like in a month's time. Let's see what they're looking like going into the next old firm. And then, big Stevie, and everyone else will judge them properly. But until then, peace.